company, it's called Wealth Creation. Yeah, it's more efficient, you see. Good evening. My name is Paul Atherton, and I'm a fellow in this fine institution. I've come up to be the lived experience moment of the evening. I have been homeless for just over a decade. It started in 2009 with a credit file error, which prevented me from renewing my tenancy. I suffer with a disability known as chronic fatigue syndrome, and the stress of the situation resulted in a three-month hospital bed stay in St. Thomas's. When they discharged me from there, they discharged me into a hostel in Brixton. And I was there for just under two years. While I was there, they gave me an option of either signing up to social housing, and they said that would take about nine to 10 years to resolve. Or alternatively, I could go into the private rented sector and I could sign up uh, for an organization at the time called Lettings First. And if I signed up with Lettings First, they would assist and help me get into private tenancy and solve the problem. Only problem was, Lettings First ceased to exist a month later. And because of that, I then lost my right to social housing. The DWP then decided to stop all my benefits. A concurrent problem, over the last 10 years, the DWP have stopped my disability benefits three times, each time for over a year. This means that you find yourself in a trap that's almost impossible to get out of. You can't address anything in respect to trying to solve the problem. And the worst part about that is that when you try and talk to the press or organizations generally, people, as you've heard, will immediately say, well, it must be your fault. You can't be homeless for 10 years unless you've done something wrong. And the issues for me started, as I say, with a credit file error. Credit file didn't have anything to do with me. Experian and Equifax just refused to remove a debt that was on my file, that had been proven not to be mine, that had a massive impact on my credit score, so I couldn't rent. Estate agents will not rent to you if you don't have a good credit score, and nearly everything now has a good credit score. I'm sure most of you read today that the, uh, there's been a case in the High Court where they're going, finally, we are going to allow estate agents to say to, to rent to people on welfare. That won't happen. It just You just won't see people saying, we don't take people on welfare. But they'll still figure ways of not doing it. And the main reason is because if you're a landlord, the likelihood of you getting paid regularly is pretty slim. One of the hardest things I had to, to deal with throughout all of this is that the DWP refused to email me. So when you're homeless and disabled, you never know where you're going to be. You don't know how uh, well you're going to be, whether you can engage on a telephone. So email became the most important thing for me to communicate with the department. So when they refused, I decided to take them all the way through judicial review to the royal courts here in London. I did it as a litigant in person, did it myself. And the judge acknowledged that my human rights and my disability rights have been breached for over a decade. But nothing else happened. So that meant that they did finally decide that they would communicate to me uh, via email, but they didn't compensate for any of the problems. They didn't do anything. But the most interesting thing, the most important thing about this was the press became interested and they started talking to me. And they said, oh, this, this is an interesting case. Will you come speak? And I go, oh, of course I'll come speak. And then they take my photograph, and then the story wouldn't run. Because I do not look, stereotypically, like a homeless person. And they need me to be sat in a box with a begging bowl, looking very poor and forlorn. And all the time, this kept coming back to the narrative and how important it is to get across the real stories that are going out there. Yes, people are drag addicts. Yes, people can be alcoholics. But there's no difference in terms of those figures between people who are homeless and people who are housed. And we don't talk about the people who are housed in the same way. We don't say, oh, you're an alcoholic, but you still got your house, so it's OK. We go, you're an alcoholic, and you haven't got a house, so that's your fault. 
And I think that's the narrative that needs to change. It's the communications that we use need to be addressed in the press, and the press need to communicate it to the public, and the public need to react accordingly. And the stories that we're hearing time and time again is that people are desperate, desperate to keep the narratives that they believe exist going. So I did a photographic exhibition a couple of weeks ago called Paul Atherton's Greatest Londoners in the Oxo Gallery. And it included a, a CEO here and a lot of people like Heather Mills from Private Eye and all people I knew and all people who'd supported me. And the idea of the exhibition was to get people in and to ask them the question, if I have the support of all of these individuals, all of these people in power, all of these people in influence, and I can't solve the problem, what chance people who don't? And the people who came in would almost always say, yes, but you're the exception. Everybody else is the drunk and the alcoholic. <laughs> it's like, no, um, I am in a pecking order of things. I'm probably more unique than some. But the reality is that actually the narrative that I'm telling here is the majority of people. The majority of people get stuck in these problems because of the system and the process, not because of anything they've done wrong. And I think that fundamentally is the most important thing to take away tonight. And when people talk, and if you can talk to journalists, and if you can encourage people across the board, that. It's the most important thing is that we are all individuals. People who are without houses are still part of the same society and the same groupings and have the same experiences and have this different backgrounds exactly the same as people who have houses do. Um, and that's what I'd like to leave you on. So if you can go out there, speak to others, talk to journalists, get them to say something different from the stereotypical narrative that we've all had to endure. Thank you.